Uh, hi, this is Richard Bauman, and this is my daughter Wendy, and this is the Dad and Daughter Cooking Show. And we usually have a theme of some sort. Uh, in this particular show, we thought we'd do something about the foods that uh, that really made Wisconsin, or that are indigenous in the various regions in Wisconsin, like bratwurst, cheese, kringle, uh, ginseng. Uh, what else is there? Cranberries. Oh, cranberries is a big one. And, you know, again, we're the state of cheese. We're the state of dairy. Yeah. We're the state of beer. beer. I'm going to use some beer um, in this. Uh, really, a lot of corn, too. Corn, you know? yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so yeah. what are you going to start well, with? Well, first of all, i got to promote my dad because we're talking all about Wisconsin foods. And, of course, he had the best-selling book in the New York Times, The Foods That Made Wisconsin Famous. You're making me feel immodest. That was done a couple of years ago, but it's still, it's still good. I, I still use it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do two things, um, cheese curds, which is going to be fun, fried cheese curds, and then I'm going to make a fish boil. And it's a Door County fish boil, which right. is, again, very classic Wisconsin. They don't do fish boils like anywhere else oh, well, in the United it's, States. It's, it's, a, it's a PR a program yeah. type thing, you know, yeah. for, for Door County. But, but on page of your book, just so you know, I referenced it, on page 114, the fish boil. And you followed and my recipe, right? Almost exactly. And I want to talk about some other versions. I did throw one additional thing in, but I'm using that as well. Oh, you model. can maybe point that out there. Yeah, I will. So, cheese curds. Who likes fried cheese curds? I do. I do, too. <laughs> I actually, I do love cheese curds because yeah. they're lower in fat. I've never had fried cheese curds in my life. But since I'm demonstrating them, I felt I needed to try them. So, at a restaurant about two weeks ago in Wisconsin, I ordered fried cheese curds. And I got to tell you, they're decadent, but they're good. Yeah. They're really good. So we're going to try, I'm being a little bit of a Julia Child here, we're going to try it. I haven't done it before, but I have yeah. power in my home chefness to give it a try. I think the trick is that you can't fry them too long, otherwise the cheese yeah. just fries away. Is that true? I think so, yeah, but we're going to yeah. give it a try. So okay. I'm going to do two different versions of fried uh, cheese curds. I really studied many different recipes, and most of them do, do take a wet batter. So one is entirely a wet batter with no breadcrumbs at all. You mean like an egg or something? Yeah. yeah. So the one batter we're going to do is going to be with beer, which was very common in a lot of the fried cheese curds recipe. Okay. Beer, milk, egg, a little bit of salt, and that's the batter. So it's going to mm -hmm. be a very juicy batter, but it'll end up being very light because of the beer. Okay. I think similar to beer battered fish which okay. is real light, like that Arthur Treacher's. Yeah. So we're going to try that first, and then we're going to try another one, which is, again, egg and milk, a little bit of salt, but breadcrumbs. And, of course, my dad and I make homemade breadcrumbs. Right. I know it sounds like really hoity-toity to make homemade breadcrumbs. It's the simplest thing in the world. Save the bread, let it get stale, crush it up. Yeah. Um, in the blender, you know, you could do Cuisinart, too. I do mine in the blender. Now, with these breadcrumbs, I did season them with salt and pepper and actually a little bit of oregano. Okay. A piece. So we're going to do the wet one first. And, again, we're going to give it a try here. So I'm going to move this over. Do you need a whisk? I do. That'd be helpful. Yeah. I didn't get that around. So I've got about, um, and I'll give the exact recipe to everybody, but about a fourth a cup of milk and about half a cup then, maybe a little bit more of beer. It's kind of a forgiving recipe, it is. really. Yeah. And I have a nice beer here. On general things, I would have the rest of it. You can use any kind of beer. Any kind of beer. You're better they, off to, what about using a light beer, not, not a light beer? Uh, they didn't specify. Oh, okay. So I'd have to really look into that, but it just said beer. I think the main thing you want is that malt. That yeah, that's part. why I think a regular beer, if you can, because it's a little more hearty. Could be. Rather than a fancy, light beer. Fancy way of. I'm not a beer part. aficionado, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm still sort of home team. I like Miller Lite. I mean, okay. that's still my beer of choice. Yeah. I just like a good Miller Lite. So you can see the batter here. It's light. 
You know, it's yeah. not too eggy. I think the beer really gives it the lightness to it. So we'll give this a whirl. First one here. I'm going to throw, I think I'll just do about, uh, I'm not going to do tons because I want to see how it works. So again, with something like this, you want to have all of your items all set and ready to go. So I have my cheese curds here. I think it's enough for one batch. Let me use your little paper towel here. And uh, my dad made it all nice for me already. He has a uh, tray, tin foil over it, paper towel. So again, we'll dry those and get some of the grease off yeah, of it. Yeah, that's not a big deal. I just like <laughs> No, but it's handy. It's handy. Well, I can absorb some of the oil. Yeah, I'm going to try just one first. So I'm actually going to take a little teaspoon here if I could. I'll just try one first to see if my oil's hot enough. I have it at about 350. I had it going already. So again, no coating on this. It's going to be very light. Yep, I think I'm just going to turn it Would up a little bit. Would you like to do this bit. so you don't want so much juice? Yeah, I'm going to turn it up just a that's little bit. That's the nice thing about cooking at home. i got everything handy. Yeah, you do. No, I think this will work. I think my yeah, spider will work. Yeah, same, yeah. Same. I just love, I use this spider. I should get more of them. I have a monster one, but I use this. They call it a spider, and a lot of chefs use it and so on. But I really use it a lot. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That kind of has a Chinese origin, the, the spider. Mm -hmm, for yeah. walk, walk for cooking. Walk, yeah, yeah, walk cooking, yeah. And it's not going to take real long. And again, it's very light, so I'm hoping they Was don't just Was the heat up high here. enough? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think this is going to be sort of interesting. I'm going to um, move this over here. Just set it in the sink. Yep. Okay. Maybe you can get a shot of that, too, how they're going. But they're looking good, looking good. Yep. I'd say that's just cooking about right. Got a nice sizzle going on them. We'll give them a try. In the meantime, I'll get my second batter going which is going to be egg and milk and salt again, with, but with no the, beer. Uh, with the coating. And that'll be the coating, yeah. I think that'll really be different. Yeah, a little bit more. I happen to like the coating. Like, I like the coating. I think on, I'm going to like the coating more, too. Yeah, I like the coating on the chicken. Yeah, and, but, um, you know, I saw two different ways, and I thought, well, let's try two different ways, a little bit healthy salt in there. And then I like a nice deep dish for coating things. Some people use more of a cookie sheet, but I think this oh, is yeah, going to be okay yeah. with you, it. You want to be able to... Um, uh, surround it. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, this is a Julia Child mess. Uh, I would, this didn't work. I would say that this didn't work. work. This didn't work at all. No, it's not going to work at all. Oh, I love it. Okay, this is a great Julia Child moment here. Okay, that's funny. Huh, I wonder how they made it work. Well, hopefully these other ones will. I wonder if I had it too hot. Okay, so let's give it a oh, try. I, I don't think so, because if hot, it would fry fast. So. Let's give it a try, this next one. So I would say, hmm, I'm not sure if that batter works. I know I followed it to a T, the batter. We could always have them edit this out of the... F no, that's <laughs> part of the fun. It's part of the fun. I said I, I laid claim. I have not done this before, so I laid claim. So let's just do a couple of these. I'm hoping they work well, out. Well, you're an excellent cook, and it's good to know that even an excellent cook might have low failure at times. There are some things, you know, people always say if you're having a dinner party, never cook something you've never cooked before. I'm always cooking things I've never cooked before. That's what I always do, too. Yeah. Always in. I just like, what? And then I usually say, how was everything? Yeah. Okay, hopefully these will work. They got a little bit more coating on. I think yeah, I also those aren't left even it too long. Coated either, actually. No, I'll give it a try here. Maybe this whole thing will end up a disaster. I'm not going to let them go very long. Well, that's okay. We won't have all kinds of people knocking on our door and asking for <laughs> cheese curds, right? Okay, let's see here. I'm going to let them go for a second. This actually does look a little bit better. I think I know that frying cheese curds is kind of tricky. You know, that's why... I... I'm taking them out already. Well, no offense, but the next time I want cheese curds, I'm going to go to the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. There might be a t tip or a trick to something Oh, there. you can do some research. Yeah. So, yeah. really didn't turn out great, folks. This is sort of funny, I That's think, That's okay. Actually. We got all of these to eat, um, But I'm going to try one. The cheese curds are good. Let's still try. There's still two that look like they're salad. I don't need a fork. Thank you. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, well, good. it's going to be hot. I don't yeah. think it's too bad. Let's see. Mmm, fantastic. You sure you yeah. don't want one? Oh. Come on, take that one. No, it actually really is good. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we definitely have to go with that kind of batter with that part. The other batter that I saw, too, I'm going to try one more. The other batter I saw, too, is with panko. So I think oh, when we panko, um, yeah. present this, mm -hmm. I still will present both of the batters. 
Not sure what happened on the one. I think maybe I fried it too long, but I do think the coating is probably yeah. better. Well, now everybody knows which recipe they're to mm -hmm. use. They to use the crumbs, not the other, right? Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. I'll toss it to you for the next while I wipe my hands here a little bit. What am I going to talk about? You're going to do brats. Well, I am, and I, I, I'm not. We're going to talk about brats, and of course, the usual thing is to have a brat in a sandwich with um, whatever. Uh, but I got a, somebody gave me a recipe some time ago. It's called brat versus d'oeuvres. Actually, it can be used as kind of a, a side dish, or you can use it as an hors d'oeuvre. And the best thing to do is have your brats partially frozen. And what you want to do is see. If they weren't frozen, then that whole skin on the out, the casing on the outside would get funny. Uh -huh. So I cut, cut them into three. I'm gonna throw them in here for now. And are you, you know, there's, Wisconsin has a lot of brats. There's some famous places that do brats, and I think it's okay to share some names. Do you have some favorite brands of brats? No. You don't? So you're really, whatever looks good? Uh, or whatever on sale. Okay. But I don't make brats very often, mainly because I don't like frying outside. Uh, I just as soon buy them at the grocery store on a weekend where they're, they have the or, people outside. You know, outside. there's so many brat fries, too, really starting in spring, going all the way through fall. That I know Anyhow, what you do is you take your brats, and usually a package of, like, uh, Johnson or what have you, they have about six brats in there. And as I said, I would partially freeze them, and then you cut them up, and then I put them in a pan, and I... <clears throat> saute them so that most of the pink is gone. They don't have to be done, but just so that the pink is gone. And then what you do is you cover them with sauerkraut, with the juice. You cover it with sauerkraut completely and let them sit overnight. And then the next day or whenever you're ready to serve them, you uh, add a half a cup of brown sugar. That would be for six brats. And you simmer it for four to six hours. Oh my gosh! So this which one you sounds like have a to, long you time. To, you yeah. have to plan this one. You have to plan and this it one just out. so happens. And your sauerkraut, Dad. I've seen sauerkraut canned, and I've seen sauerkraut jarred. Either one. I like the sauerkraut that comes in the plastic bag. In a plastic bag. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, this is what they look like. It's a little bit juicy here. Now, have you made this sometimes as an hors d'oeuvre and you put picks in it? Haven't I seen that at your parties? That's why I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's right. You got it all there. Yeah. I'm just going to take a couple out here. So I think that's a thought, too, because a lot of times people think of the brats and the picnics and the big, um, you know, you get the bright kind of brat roll. But to do something like this, you can actually have a little bit, maybe a little fancier event with your brats. Yeah, so there you go. There's, then. And again, being in Wisconsin, we're all spoiled, but if you go outside the state of Wisconsin, I still have people that want me to bring brats for them or suggest things with brats. I mean, it is an unusual thing that Wisconsin is known for, but not as popular as the rest. And going back to the cheese curds, which was sort of a failure here, I was uh, part of this gathering, this fellowship with, through Bank of America, and uh, uh, went to the south for these. Whoops! Went to the south for these three sessions, and we decided after the first one, we were all sort of forming. We're all professionals in the same industry. We said, let's bring something from our home state next time that we can share. So I brought cheese curds with me on the airplane and brought them along, yeah. and everybody went wild over yeah. the cheese curds. So it was fun. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyhow. That's it. Good. Now, could you also do the brats um, this style, but just have it still in a bun? I mean, this doesn't have to be cut well, off. Well, obviously, yeah. you know, okay. you could fry but, I mean, is that yeah. how you do it? If you were going to make brats at home for mom and stuff, would you do it this style? or? I don't know. Okay. We don't okay. really eat that much brats. Well, and you you know, like, This will be enough. You don't having brats and stuff. But, uh, but this is good. <laughs> it really sounds simple, but with that sauerkraut and that uh, brown sugar, they really taste mm -hmm. totally different. I can see it. Yeah, let me just smell it a little bit. I'm not... I don't eat meat, you know. Now, also, someone also told me that the way that she cooked brats, and this was a lady up in Alaska, believe it or not, she simmered them in red wine. Okay. And I tried that a couple of weeks ago. Okay. It wasn't bad. It's, an, it's another version rather than just having the brats on the open fire, you know, just something different. Good. That's my bratwurst spiel. Okay, I appreciate that. I'm going to move this hot oil just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, don't. Okay. So what we're going to do next is fish boil. So I've got to get my ingredients over here a little bit and talk about it. And I'm going to demo it. But then, of course, just like my dad with his brats, I had to make the fish boil earlier this morning. So my whole house smells like fish boil. And it really does, but in a good way. 
So I will. Well, I think the important thing here is that everybody just thinks the fish boil has to be done in the 30 gallon uh, right. te- uh, kettle yeah. in an open fire. Yeah. And this is a version where you can make one at home if you like a fish boil. Exactly. And the version, too, I used your version, but I also, I usually straddle numerous recipes. And the mm-hmm. other recipe I straddled was actually called Door County Fish Boil for Two. Yeah. Oh. So okay. you really can. So your basic ingredients in the fish boil that's in your book, and you can add a couple things to it onion. The onion that I use today, which I'll show in a little bit, and we'll plate it up, is a red onion. You can use any kind of onion. I've seen both. The red onion I just thought would be pretty, so I did a red onion. This is actually beautiful Peruvian onion, yellow onion that I just got. Red potatoes. Must, must, must be the red yeah, potatoes. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, in the fish bowl that I made, I did baby red potatoes, so I did not have to cut them, but I, oh. there were a couple bigger ones. I also wanted to test a little bit. Oh. Just a little bit smaller than this, but I cut that in half mm-hmm. just to see if the flavor would infuse. This is where the chef gets to modify. I had some beautiful organic leeks, so I cut and put a few leeks in it. That, that's not part of the traditional not recipe. Not part of it. Yeah. This is where chef gets to play, you know, to play okay. chef. Um, then excellent fish. So the fish that I used, they often call for Pollock fish. Pollock? I guess. Yeah, P-O-L-L. Pollock, Pollock, Pollock fish. Yeah. Pollock, which is often in fish fries. It's a and white ex- fish. That you and accessible, and yeah. accessible in Wisconsin. But I used a higher end halibut. So I went high end mm-hmm. on my fish. Just so it's white fish. Yep. And then you don't the, want to use salmon. No, no, it has to be <laughs> no, white fish. And, and it has to be a fish. I mean, it can break apart and get all, you know, sort of mushy, but you want to hold it a little bit too. Yeah. So like a walleye um, could work, the Paula could work, uh, general white fish could work. This really held very nice. You'll see the nice mm-hmm. piece of fish. And uh, fresh corn. Uh, we're filming this series in the summer months, so I actually got this beautiful corn from the farmer's market. Make a little bit of mess in my dad's kitchen with all the corn stuff. But I want to show you how to cut the corn if you need to cut it in pieces, which we need to cut it for this. Just sort of throw yeah, it. Yeah, just throw it over there. Yeah, I'll throw it in your area. Um, so a lot of mess here, making my dad's area a mess. So first of all, I know people don't like this at the store, but you always got to peel the corn a little bit. So this is even a little bit. I don't know if I did the best job because see a little bit of that mold on it. That really shouldn't be. Yeah, for sure we're going to cut it off. So what I do is I have this piece, which is part of a pilon, and I use a really nice sharp knife, and this works very well. It doesn't spatter as much because you want uh, sections of corn for the fish boil. So I place it here, and I use my hand and just... And it oh, cuts perfectly. I think it would just cut through with the knife. No, it? too hard. Well, I don't have the strength. Oh, okay. I don't have the strength for oh, okay, it. So okay. um, you probably could if you're strong, but I yeah. go like this. It cuts really nice. Yeah. And then I can even fine tune it and cut off that little end. Okay. So again, we're going to demonstrate making it. You get a big pot like this, and you actually fill it with water, and you boil the water first. Then you add your seasoning. I used this this morning. So the seasoning that we're using. Oh, you made the supper, did you no, buy this? You can make it up, but that I didn't do. So this is shrimp and crab boil seasoning. Oh, really? Yep. Or you can use the classic Old Bay, which I know you and Mom have always used, yeah, too. Old and you Bay can actually is, right. pour it in there loose. I sort of like this. It infuses the flavor, but the stuff isn't going to stick to mm-hmm. it. So I like the little container. Okay. So then you take your potatoes. The water is boiling. And then you take your potatoes. In this case, probably for this potato, I think I'd actually just cut it. I'm going to cut yeah. this one's a little bit bigger. I'm going to cut it like that into thirds. Okay. Throw it in. Throw your leek in. And again, you don't have to do the leek, but since I had the leek, throw it in. You actually keep the uh, sort onion of, skin. Mm-hmm, you keep that on there. So again, you can cut this up and quarter it because it's going to hold it together a little bit more. So you quarter that. And then you, um, so that's going to boil then for a little bit with the piece. Once that's boiled and the potato is minutes. just 10, or probably not even that much, but a good boil. I'd mm-hmm. say, yeah, I'd say about 10 or 15 minutes. So a rolling right. boil. I start that first. I put the corn in after maybe about five minutes because the corn doesn't need as long. So that goes in a little bit later. And then just near the end, you're going to add your fish. And again, I wanted to show you, I would do it about this big, the pieces of fish. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they're hunks. hunks. Yep. So water goes in there, boil it. I just made fish boil. Okay, yeah, now I'm going to show you what it looks like, and we're going to plate it. But not too, not too tricky to do. We'll talk about oh, some accompaniments. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put it in here. You can move that. Just move no, that to I was going to wipe this off. Okay. You're going to serve in yep. there. So. Okay, so let me grab it here, and you get to see it done. So it's still actually warm because I just made it a little while ago. 
and you're sort of thinking, wow, this is soup. This is soup here. Well, you know, you're not going to eat the broth, right? It's a fish boil. You're going to pull it out. So I'm going to get my handy dandy piece here, and I'm going to plate. So I'm going to do one nice cob of corn. Look how my fish held. Held really nice. Okay. Piece of fish. I'm going to do lots of potatoes. These little potatoes, you can see the size. And on this one, I actually took license. I forgot to tell you, but I put some carrots in. I thought, why not? I just thought that would be really good. And don't they put cabbage in too, generally? Cabbage is in your recipe. I don't like cabbage. Okay. Yeah, but you can do cabbage. But I would say that's not as common. The main things are the fish boil, the potatoes, the onions, and the fish. I've seen and the, corn. and the corn. I've seen some other things. Now another version, my friend from work, Mike Ketzel, he makes his and he adds some sausage to it. Oh. Yeah, and do we sausage. That kind of <laughs> uh, um, here's the onions. It's so kind of contradictory to fish. Yep, but but <laughs> it gives it's gonna give it that little bit of that um, I don't know, just sort of that meat flavor, that sausage yeah, flavor. So zing. I would say this is pretty good like that. I think that's enough for one person. Yeah, and then cool. you serve it with lemon wedge. So, yep, I mean it's nice because I'm going to try this. I'm actually going to try it here. I'm going to put some lemon on it and a little bit of maybe you're I won't put salt brave. on first. Well, this wasn't like my cheese curds. So yeah, turn well out. you were brave there. But you'd serve it like this, and then the other thing they do, and I'm just not big on butter. I use butter very exclusively. Is you would have also a nice little container of hot butter. Yeah, with a little rye bread. Well, yeah, it's a rye bread, and then um, coleslaw. Coleslaw is another thing to go with it. Yeah. But the basic parts here is the fish, the potatoes. Let's give it a try. I want to try the fish and I want to try the potato. No garlic, so you can have this. Dad. Look how nice that fish is. That's nice, yeah. yeah. And again, this is a high-end fish. I mean, it's just $29 a pound, right? This isn't, yeah, well, so, okay. you know. But, I mean, good ingredients, good stuff. Mm. I don't think they use that kind of fish up in Door County, though. I Probably not, not have yeah. it, because again, it's higher-end fish. But no, it tastes really nice. That whole thing was started as a promotion, and, but, mm -hmm. but, but it, it's good. It's mm -hmm. classic. I've been one time. It's a festivity. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you go to places with the table, so I think mm -hmm. it needs a little bit of salt for me. Everybody sits around. You've got a lot of camaraderie. Yeah. Do one more little bite. I, I love be the fish. On the, munching on it. I love the corn. Well, I'd say this was very successful. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So that's your fish boil. So it can't be much easier than that. You're basically just boiling stuff at yeah, different amounts. I would say. Okay. So do you want to talk a little bit about chicken paprikash? I know you're going to have that tonight with mom for dinner, and it's not necessarily Wisconsin piece, but since you were making it, I said, let's just tell our audience about it. Uh, okay. Can <laughs> uh, you get it off you? Should I bring it over? Yeah, you set it on the board here. I'm turning the other part off here, too. Turned your brats off. There you go. Yeah, just talk about it a little bit. Chicken paprikash is one of the easiest meals to make, and it just you just wouldn't think that it would come out as good as it does, and it really does. I just get a chicken breast, or you can get chicken strips at the store, which are a little cheaper. The thinner is okay, and it just so happens. See, this is a small piece of um, chicken. And all I do is cut that into bite-sized pieces. Looks like really nice chicken, by the way. Then I brown it in butter. So it's brown almost to the point that it can even be crispy. And then uh, what else do I do? Well, your paprika. Yeah, well, flour. first of all, yeah, you have to make a, um, uh, a coating. And I use a half a cup of flour and I use paprika. Where, um, I was going to show that. Oh, yep. Hmm. Where'd you put your paprika? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Uh, you oh, got to, Here. Uh, you got to use paprika. And the Hungarian paprika? This is really the best, although it, 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 you can't buy it at any store. You're going to have to buy it at a specialty store like um, uh, oh, maybe Festival a Food in Sheboygan. Yeah, Festival Food would I know it. Piggly Wiggly and Walmart don't carry it. And um, a little bit of salt. And then you take the, your little chicken pieces, you, you shake them all up and, and coat them. And then you put it in the pan where it's butter, and then you, you get, let those get browned. Oh, and they're kind of brown, then you add chicken stock. Now, I wouldn't use chicken broth, I would use chicken, chicken stock, stock okay. which comes in the... Uh, yeah, again, it smells fantastic. Which comes in a, uh, a can, a box, rather. And then I let it simmer for another maybe half hour or so, and there you have it. Mm -hmm. 
the taste is really, really mm -hmm. excellent. Oh, it just it, it smells just, wonderful. I think it's the paprika. It just doesn't seem like something that... Mm -hmm. um, it's simple things like that. Just like you said, the brown sugar and the sauerkraut, you know, really makes a difference with it. Yeah. Nice. And then you could serve this with mashed potatoes if you'd like to use that gravy. If you want to make that gravy a little, uh, a little thicker, uh, you can add a little sour cream, or you could always add flour if you want to, but okay. they're, you know, Boy. but a little sour cream... Makes That's it, going to make it a little bit creamy and have Well, to put to over it. your potatoes if you like that, I've or to put over noodles. The noodles. I've seen you make it a lot with yeah. the noodles. This is a good meal. This good. is really a good meal. Good. Yeah, I know you make it a lot. I hear you Yeah, no offense, but it's a lot better than your curds. <laughs> <laughs> I, we have to have faith in the cheese curds. I know we can do it. So I put myself out there. I think it's sort of worked with the breadcrumbs. May, but may, maybe I think it's the oil piece or something. Yeah. Maybe we'll try and experiment a little bit and then and another show uh, I, I do the cheese curds. <laughs> but the first one's just... Or else just tell everybody to buy them at the yeah, restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get them yeah, somewhere else. Get them somewhere else. Get them somewhere else. Yeah. Or get them, I think they serve them at festivals too, fried cheese curds. I didn't think it'd be that tricky. Yeah. Though, so. Yeah, Anyhow, no, so I think some nice things. I think this is classic. This takes the... Oh, that's classic. Classic This just Wisconsin. takes the... Um, you know, the mystery out of a fish boil, and it's mm -hmm. really fun. And you can make it small. This is really probably fish boil for four. I got carried away, but I'll give it to my kids to enjoy. And then you can try the cheese curds if you want. Maybe just eat cheese curds and not have mm -hmm. them fried. Um, your bratwurst, I think it's a twist on it. Oh, this yeah, and this is <laughs> as simple as it sounds. It really is good. Yeah. So um, Good. Uh, can you do anything with the juice there? No. That, that just... Yeah, just boiling juice. So this isn't a soup, so you got to be clear yeah. of that. I mean, it's not going to taste bad, but it's not a soup. Yeah. So it's just to give it the flavor, everything sort of tastes together like that. And, um, yeah, hmm. good. Okay. Well, I'm pleased with this. So Pardon? I'm pleased with my, my fish boil. I yeah. think it turned well, out really nice, good. and I think it, it looks it pretty and stuff. It isn't too. one of my favorite things, but um, yeah. it is for a lot of people. Yeah. So what do they charge for a fish boil generally? Oh, you boy, know? a lot. And when you really 15 think about bucks, it, oh, probably even more, yeah, per uh -huh. person, yeah. Because I remember going to fish boils in Dora County, and they would just have these huge sit outside, you know, yeah. these huge picnic tables, yeah. and the vat would be like this. Yeah, well, so the whole theory. idea of when we were researching what we were going to make of Wisconsin to do it for a small amount, yeah. I think it turned out well. So good. So Get my dad's book if you haven't got it, Foods That Made Wisconsin Famous. Think about our foods here. I think they're really good. And we did a couple twists on classic Wisconsin yeah, yeah. products and foods. Maybe too fast, but we got no, them across I think we did too fast, yeah. So, um, Sounds good. Okay. Uh, now some of our future shows, we're going to do what? Oh, we're well, going to do other Wisconsin things. We might do a little bit more in Wisconsin. We're mm -hmm. going to research it. But the one coming up that we have is going to be on drinks and beverages. So rather than just food, we thought we would demo a couple drinks and beverages, which I think will be fun. Yeah, and all drinks turn out real good, don't they? We don't have to worry about <laughs> this how This one I don't think out. I'm going to have an issue with turning out. And, you know, especially, I don't think I'll have an issue with how no, to do the martinis, no, but I'm no. going to give some, some ideas on that too. We can maybe demonstrate also how one should taste it. Right, got to taste it. Like okay. I tasted this. I think it's important. Yeah, well, that you did. You really taste. Good. Yeah. And I think it tasted really good. So good. So thank so, you for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much.